Hello everyone, it's David from Automotive Press. Today I'm going to talk about something interesting and that is how do you decide between a car-based or unitized body vehicle like this one which is a Honda Pilot or the 4Runner which is a body on the frame truck-based SUV. The two appear to be similar in terms of where they're going with the market but underneath in terms of engineering they're very different. So today I'm going to use this Pilot as a reference point and try to explain to you what is a decision factor in terms of buying the unitized body SUV or a body on a frame SUV like the 4Runner. Let's go. Welcome back. But before I go too far with that, let me do a quick quality check on this all new Honda Pilot, which is a beautiful color. Maybe it's not for me, but it is definitely a really nice color. Uh, but in terms of quality control for the panel fit and panel alignment, what's interesting first of all is that they've designed this so that the hood it's a bit of a clamshell design and goes over this a little bit so that the gaps are not as obvious. Um, but I can kind of still measure the gap, which is about 3.8 millimeter here, uh, 3.7, and then 3.5, about the 3.5 on top as well. So it's not bad. It's actually a little bit better than I expected. Uh, it is built in the U.S., this uh, particular model, by the way. But there is a bit of a curvature challenge here where the, um, the two panels meet. It's not quite perfect. And you know what? This is one of those things that if I was the designer and engineer for this vehicle, I wouldn't have designed it this way because when you're trying to meet the curvature with the curvature, it's almost impossible to get it right from the production perspective. Regardless of that, let's look at the gap here. 3.5, 4.5. So that's actually, sorry, that's... 5 millimeters, so that's pretty wide, and then also 4.5 millimeters. So they're actually aligned really well. There's no problem with the actual panel quality and the stamping, and the paint job looks pretty good as well. But the gaps are definitely a little bit wider than what I would like to see. I want to see it in sort of a 3.5 to 4.5 millimeter range. But when you get down to a 5 millimeter here, that is a little bit wider than what I like to see. Not so obvious if you're just walking and looking at it, but as an engineer, I notice it right away. Uh, but the paint quality is really good. Minimal orange peel, very smooth paint, good a reflection and a good clear coat. So that's all good. But let's get back to my original question that I asked you. Do you prefer to buy a unitized body SUV like the Honda Pilot? Or do you still prefer to buy a body on a frame truck like a Toyota 4Runner? and how do you decide? Well, let me tell you three reasons why you might want to consider SUV that's based on a car body like this one, and three reasons why it might make sense to buy body on the frame SUV, which there aren't too many of anymore these days, like the 4Runners. So now let me start with the first point, and that is for anything that's based on a unitized body, such as the Honda Pilot, it's generally speaking smoother, a little bit more agile, and feels more like a car. Because basically, when you look at the unitized body, SUV, it is essentially a car-based body with a SUV back. That's the only difference. It's higher up, it's a bigger model, and you've got the um, back end here, but it really is a raised station wagon, if you want to call it that way. That's the honest truth, because what unitized body means is that this is a whole series of panel put together using welding and using robotics. That's an area I specialize in, um, but underneath there isn't actual frame. There is uh, something that it kind of mimics the frame because these uh, unitized body underneath are welded together to form what looks like a kind of a frame but it is not a separate frame from a body. They're all stuck together. So you still end up with a good rigidity. There's no problem with the safety or anything like that but when you look underneath the vehicle from front to back and you look at all the panels and how they've come together it is still at the end of the day a single body that have been welded together. Compare that to a 4Runner or any other body on frame SUVs that are truck based, then you'll realize it's very different because they have a frame underneath that is completely separate from the body. In fact, engine, powertrain, transmission, everything is attached to that separate frame and then the car body just goes on top of it and that is exactly how body on frame truck style SUVs like. So they are very different design. But you kind of have to keep in mind that the rest of the world in terms of SUVs are all moving toward monocoque body and entice body. So there actually aren't that many uh, body on frame SUVs anymore. Even things like a Range Rover, a Grand Cherokee are all unitized body as well. And the reason why so many of these manufacturers have moved on to unitized body, as I mentioned already, is basically because it's a single 
unitized body, which is easier to engineer, um, but also it makes the vehicle a little bit um, more agile and better handling on the road versus truck-based SUV, which are kind of sitting up high and a little bit harder to manage. So the first reason why you might want to buy the monocoque body is that it handles typically better. The second advantage for a unitized body is that because it's lighter and the engineering is a little bit simpler and also the manufacturing is simpler, you end up with an overall lighter package and therefore usually it produces better fuel efficiency. It's a lot more difficult for the truck-based SUV to have a lighter body, so that's definitely an advantage. For those of you who are looking for a more efficient SUV, you have to basically buy unitized body type vehicles. The third reason why you might want to consider unitized body SUV is because it's also usually cheaper than the body and frame. And that is simply because the engineering behind it, the design of it, as well as the whole manufacturing is simpler and easier and faster so the manufacturer can pass on that saving to the consumers. Uh, whereas the body on the frame vehicles, which are much more rare, are actually a little bit more difficult to design and produce these days. So they tend to be priced a little bit higher. So those are some of the reasons why you might want to buy a unitized body SUV, which for the most part covers like 98% of all SUVs out there. But what about body on the frame truck-based SUV, like the 4Runner, like the new Lexus GX that just came out, or upcoming Land Cruiser Prado? Why would you buy those versus a similar size SUV? Well, because they are based on a truck design, they feel very different on the road. Um, the whole body is sitting on top of frame that has the separate engine and chassis and also the transmission and so forth are all attached to the frame. And therefore, there's a lot more isolation of the body from the frame. That is going to result in a very different feel from typical SUVs, which basically just feels like a car that's uh, setting up tall and high. Uh, whereas, uh, let's say a 4Runner, which we do have, as well as a Lexus GX that we have, have a very isolated feel. You sit much taller, and because they're also often using the older style hydraulic power steering, you get a really good sense from the road to your hands. Versus, let's say, on this Honda Pilot, the steering is very light because it's fully electric in terms of a steering called EPS, or electric power steering. And so those are some of the differences that make a uh, truck-based SUV feel more like a truck and some people really like that feel. So if you drove the 4Runner and let's say you drove a Highlander or you drove the Pilot and you say, wow, why does the 4Runner feel so different and it feels so solid? Well, that is the reason why the truck-based body-on-frame SUVs have fundamentally different engineering and different design and those feelings cannot be replicated with other SUVs that are unitized body. So that's the first reason why you might want to consider something like 4Runner versus the Pilot. The second reason why you might want to buy a truck-based SUV versus a car-based SUV is that if you really want to do hardcore off-roading, then typically speaking, truck-based SUV perform better. The design and engineer to take tougher conditions. You can they also change the, the shocks and suspension components and so forth. Now, the whole aftermarket for off-roading are clearly designed for truck-based SUV, such as Tacoma, 4Runner, Jeep Wrangler, Ford Bronco, etc. So those are the type of vehicle you want to use uh, if you really want to go off-roading, mainly because you can swap out the components and so forth and create an ultimate hardcore off-roader. And something like that is a lot harder to do on a car-based SUV like the Honda Pilot, such as this one. Now, this one is called a Trail Sport. It already does have some of the um, off-roading capabilities, such as uh, better tires and so forth. And therefore, you can still go off-roading and maybe even some of the hardcore off-roading uh, is possible. But it wouldn't be advised just because the unitized body is such that if you've been part of the car body for some reason from uh, uh, making wrong moves, it's going to be a lot more difficult to fix. Whereas on the body on the frame SUVs, you've got the full frame to protect the vehicle. And those frames are pretty solid. It's really hard to bend them and therefore they're just geared better for hardcore off-roading. The third and final reason could be somewhat subjective, but generally speaking, body-on-the-frame SUVs have a very isolated feel. And what I mean by that is because the body is separate from the frame, the entire feel of the road can be isolated better on a um, truck-based SUV. So you get that really smooth, almost like flying through the air kind of feel. Uh, with the Lexus GX or Toyota 4Runner, which we have, versus something like a Honda Pilot, which is a monocoque body, where you feel the road better and where you are sitting a little bit closer to the ground. So some people really like the truck-based feel, like I mentioned earlier. And so that's something that's uh, somewhat subjective. You have to kind of decide what's right for you. 
you might want to drive let's say a foreigner back to back with let's say a pilot or let's say a highlander and you can decide for yourself which one is more suitable most people actually prefer the car style or car based feel and that's why manufacturers are simply moving into a monocoque body suv and away from truck based suv and there aren't that many selection to pick from anywhere on the truck side but other people who grew up driving trucks and who maybe really like foreigner will have a hard time switching over to something like this which feels too much like a car and not enough like a truck so those are some of the reasons why you might want to buy the truck based suv but obviously it's not a very simple black and white situation when you compare the two from engineer's perspective i prefer the body on frame suv because they're more rugged they have a better engineering in terms of isolating the road and they're more capable as off-roaders so for me they make a lot of sense but for most of you you might prefer something like a honda pilot which drives beautifully very smooth very comfortable um, but also this particular one is a little bit numb in terms of steering input and steering feedback so in that case you might actually prefer the hydraulic power steering feel on something like a foreigner or lexus gx which we have so i hope this video was helpful for you to decide what to do when you're comparing with something like a honda pilot and toyota foreigner which i know it seems like a strange comparison but people do cross shop those vehicles especially because this pilot is a trail sport version that's trying to compete with the likes of toyota foreigner trd off-road or trd pro anyhow if you like my video i would appreciate it if you can give me a thumbs up and make some comments and if you haven't done so yet would you kindly subscribe as well thank you so much